Hello there, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Mr. Mokulover, of course, and we are continuing as a Commonwealth of Siberia as we watch Magadan and the Divine Mandate of Siberia kill each other off. Uh, let's see, Matkovsky as well as Men, of course. We have the West Siberian Republic now under Yel Yeltsin, which is kind of cool. And then we have Zykov, which was one of the persons, or one of the comments from yesterday. Once someone recommended I play as Sumera's Zykov, also play as Magadan's Magadan under Petalin, so I don't know who that is, but we'll see what happens. Also plays Aryan Brotherhood, and of course, as the Amuad Nation, but last time, we, we struggled. I definitely struggled. We almost have $10 billion in an annual deficit. It is what it is, but we have cheer economical research finished, and no, no longer get benefits of a civilian budget boost, which, maybe we should stop doing that, just to keep an eye on things, and we're getting enough manpower, manpower, political power, for now. Last time we also finished off the political power branch. Now we just finished off the industry or the econ economic branch, which is pretty good. So our industrial equipment and expertise improved. We replaced this organized economy with humanist economy, which is really nice. But we could do more military stuff, which is not bad. Duty to the Republic. Not a, not a bad thing, but let's still go with potential friends. Though we are mostly alone as a social democracy in Russia, there are still many socialist nations who could, might be amendable to us. Our government is often more moderate than many of the socialist nations, but we're certainly more similar to each other than to the various fascist and despotist, despotist nations in Russia. We should reach out to these socialist nations, and should our meetings go well, potentially establish some mutually beneficial relationships. In these cold, sprawling wastes we call home, danger abounds across every hill and behind every tree. We would do well to have some allies. That's a very good point to make out, yes. Very good to have allies, but the, the People's Siberian Plan succeeds. And then in the city of Novosibirsk, in a conference room down the street from a food processing plant, a group of workers meets with a group of bureaucrats. The bureaucrats read off a list of quotas by the central government would like to meet. The workers elected by the fellows on the flat plant floor read off a list of necessities that must be provided. They haggle, but ultimately a decision is reached that works for everyone. Many miles away in Kemerovo, a similar discussion takes place with workers at a steel mill. The fact that the mill is run by state-owned enterprises does not detract from the rights of the workers. In the town of Yurga, a landlord rubs his eyes with anxiety. A litter has just arrived from his family's lawyer in the capital, detailing a new set of regulations that will likely chip away at the wealth amassed over generations of landholding. Meanwhile, upriver, a family of farmers toast to their improved fortunes. Across central Siberia, the impacts of the humanist economic reforms are being felt in every home, office, and factory. The rights of workers to control their own destinies have been pro promulgated, and for the people of the region, the new Siberian plan has been a momentu mon monumental success. There can be no understanding between the hand and the brain unless the heart acts as mediator. Cool. Uh, so, let's see, where was that? Foundations, Warlord City, Junction, Basin, the Air Plant. Let's see, what do we have? Basic Army, which is not great, but it could be worse. The Novosibirsk Conference, not bad, look at this, increases idealism and increases political outsiders. Overworks State Administration is getting much lower, which is awesome. Bureau of Military Industrial Development, cool. And then we also have Military Budget Slashed, which is okay. And then we have Humanist Economy, ooh. Consumer Goods Factories, that hurts us, but that's okay. Just gotta keep an eye on that. We're not gonna spend any more on the civilian budget. We've got some advanced drop tanks. And we have 40 billion in terms of GDP, which is, <laughs> our deficit to income ratio is 122.7%. Yeah, I know, that's not very good. But, you know, there's not much I can do about it. So we can just enjoy the time that we have together, my friends. So, there's another comment from yesterday saying that, uh, oh, oh God, elections are soon upon us. That Samara, when we saw it yesterday, Samara changed like two leaders at the same time. That's just because they had political instability, and it is what it is. Elections are soon upon us. Promote the elites. Ooh, ooh, no, 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 no. How's the map looking? Yeah, still pretty much exactly the same, which I'll talk about things very soon. Yeah, greatly increases humanist lower support. Well, we already have enough humanist lower support, you know, with this popularity. And then we have faction support. Oh, 56. Oh. Uh, oh, no, no. Okay, so it's actually 100%. I must have gone down up here. I didn't get over there yet. So 100% in the house. So, okay, cool. Whatever. We're doing really well in idealism and doing better on political outsiders. So, promote to the elites. No. Uh, popularity. No. Okay, cool. And regional development, I want to do, but we can't do that. We can't do that. Uh, I close that too. Cool. Elections are soon upon us. Perhaps as nowhere else in the world where elections are such an important event than right here in Central Siberia. We can expect turnout to, as always, be very high. However, our election is not guaranteed, our re-election. The campaign season has begun very shortly, and if we want to convince the people to vote for us once again, we need to have something to show for it. All of our most important plans and promises must be completed before election day if we want to secure our victory. There's no time for dilly-dallying. Get everything done if you want. don't want to get booted from office. Let's show the people we mean business. Let's hope so. So that was... Oh, the economy is humanist aligned. 
no political crisis, and we have a basic army. Uh, it was recommended, or there was a comment from yesterday stating that, am I going to continue playing even if the humans don't win? Well, if the humans don't win in the next election, then my plan is to hopefully maybe do things off screen and get back up to the point where we stopped so that we have a human selection. Because I want to make sure Shostakovich wins. I just, that's probably the one reason why I played as Tomsk in this campaign. I really want to play as Shostakovich and have him reunite Russia. I think that would have been a really cool idea. So, you'll probably see me fade in, fade out if we don't win, which might uh, might not happen. So, whatever. And I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm, even though we could find maybe some potential friends, even though they're probably all dead by now. Potential enemies, okay. Diplomatic education. A republic only functions so long as the people stay involved and vote. However, this is only possible if the people stay informed. Too many of our citizens are either unaware or misunderstood of our foreign policy, with many believing lies about it in the absence of other information to the contrary. We should turn our foreign policy into a more easily digestible information for the workers' consideration. We will explain our positions and reasonings for the actions we take with other nations on our borders and abroad, and hopefully our citizens will approve, which will be a good, good thing. Man, we're still getting 1.65. That's so nice. <coughs> However, I can't do this yet because we have to... Ooh. Bow, die, abdicates, communist party swift into power. Oh, Now with a bang, but with a whimper. I'm going to keep at least 60 political power at all times just in case so that we can get some... Uh, what's it? Propag it's not propaganda. It is... Ask for... Modern, but no. Just so, oh, so we get the event or the decision <coughs> so that we can... Increase our popularity. Because that's going to be pretty very important for us. If hopefully we can do well with this. I mean, 24.7 is not great. Military construction is nice, though. That's very, very nice. Anything else? It is 66. It's going to be 67. We could do that. Let's go and grab this instead. Military factory construction. Or just military construction in general. We could lower construction spending, but... Mm. Hey, actually, look at that. Our GDP. After we get that last focus done, our GDP actually... Our growth is 6.7. Obviously, not very good when you have your debt interest of 12%, but it's a work in progress. Hmm. <clears throat> not bueno. Very not bueno. Anything else down here? Oh, nice. Developmental subsidies looks okay. It's okay. Mm hmm. Not bad. Man, yeah, they're, all, they're all good to do. <clears throat> However, we just don't have the probably means to do it. So, who exists? Um, well, it looks like we can't get through here yet, which kind of sucks. We want to do that, but I guess we can't go down that way. <clears throat> I suppose that we have to go down like I don't want to increase my debt this way. I guess better weapons. The rifle is the most important tool the modern soldier has at his disposal, and the quality quality of the soldier's rifle is as important as the training he receives to use it. Even the greatest soldier armed with a musket wouldn't be able to do half as much damage in the field as an untrained conscript with a Klashnikov. The more lead one can saturate the battlefield with, the greater the chance that something or someone is going to be hit with said lead. Our enemies across the border are surely working on newer and more advanced versions of the rifles they already have, and if we allow them to advance significantly past us, we might find ourselves overpowered in the field. Excuse me. The New Diplomatic Academy. Today in Tomsk, the Siberian School of Foreign Affairs was inaugurated by the President in a ceremony attended by many members of academia, the student population, and the diplomatic corps. Located near the main city railway station, the School of Foreign Affairs completion marks a great major milestone in the government's efforts to reach out to the world. At the school, students from all walks of life will study international relations, history, language, and political science, among the other fields. This goal is to train a new generation of diplomats who will represent our nation on the world stage. In addition, they will hopefully be able to spread our humanist ideals to far-flung countries, creating new political and social bonds that will benefit all of mankind. Already, agents of the school are traveling the Republic, seeking out prospective students. Only within a few years' time, we hope to see junior foreign service officers staffing embassies and consulates around the world. We do do not go abroad in search of monsters to destroy. Nothing here yet. We have enough that we can do this stuff. We can do cross line thinking since we already have no authority. We lose a little bit of stability, but uh, actually, maybe not. We already have maxed out cynicism. Let's get rid of political outsiders. And by getting rid of political outsiders, that means um, we integrate them. Not that we're going to get rid of them. We're just going to, you know, incorporate them more. Let's see. Increases political outsiders? No. Decreases political outsiders? I don't want to get more debt, though. Hmm. Because this is okay. I mean, this is fine with me. We can lower stability all we want. But political outsiders decreases political outsiders. Uh, if we're going to... Let's see. So we have this one. Recruit the best outsiders. Debt will increase. Or the debt interest rate. The stability. If we're going to get... If we're going to get really hit hard, we must improve our... 
research facilities, right? We might as well. There you go. 45%? Well, it's getting it's getting there. And, you know, it's, it's, it's only 12%. It's only 12%, that's all, you know. I wonder, how high of an interest rate can you get? Have you seen anyone, like, get an interest rate of, like, 20% before? Or, like, 40%? That's insane. That'd be so high. Have you seen anyone? Let me know in the comments below. Just because I don't know how you get there, but it seems like we might be able to do that. Burgundian bunkers? Uh-oh. The beginning of a Burgundian spring or just more corruption? Oh, here we go. This is why I saved my political power. Pro-humanist cap uh, propaganda or campaign. Not, it's not propaganda, I swear. It's it's a campaign, not propaganda. Cool. Hey, at least we got that one done. So we can spend our political power on other stuff now. Decrease political outsiders, greatly increases. This is what I wanted to do. There we go. So it hurts us a little bit here, but that's fine. We already have more than 60%, so 92%. We can always increase it a little later with uh, cross on thinking, which would be great. And then we have this. 47%, not bad, not bad. We have the Outsiders Act as well, so. And that does give us more research speed, which is kind of nice, not gonna lie, that's kind of nice. Still training, still training. Uh, reunification of Russia, can't do that yet, better weapons. And we should do stronger armor. One of the most important lessons learned from the Second World War was the necessity of a modern tank corps. Panzers with more powerful guns and stronger armor than we've ever seen before broke through our lines as if they were made of putty. We face similar difficulties today. The warlords who have managed to acquire some portion of the former Soviet Union's tank stockpile, or figured out some way to produce their own, are often the warlords causing us the most damage and casualties. An armored corps will be vital in ensuring our continued military supremacy. Cool. I kind of want to do this just to get rid of this. Siberian expansion? Hmm. Even though this is, would be good to do as well. Uh, let's see what professionals... Actually, how is our army professionalism? It's not going up at all. We, we need to do that one next. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Just so it goes up just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Tiny bit more. 8.3. Only 15 billion in debt. That's all. What are we building right now? Roads are nice. But. Hmm. Let's get some more there. Can we build? Oh, yeah, we can. Oh, nice. Look at all these resources. We're so resource rich. We even have some tungsten down here, too. Nice. It's beautiful. Alright, let's go ahead and do Army Professionalism, because that'll be good. Uh, developmental Studies. We're, we're, there was one that gives you more political power every day. Uh, and Stability. Maybe maybe it's not back yet. Maybe we already did it. Infantry Anti-Tank Capabilities. Very good. Uh, infantry Anti-Tank Capabilities. Number two, then. The Kazakhstan's unit by the Commies last time. Was it Bowman that won last time? Yeah, it was. It was Bowman. I asked that last time. I can't ever remember. Loyalisting. Cool. <clears throat> uh, Slovak State, Ostland, Denmark. Cool. cool. Oh! Oh boy! <clears throat> Magadan unifies the Russian Far East. Stronger armor. Very nice. Ah, we've got potential enemies. Now it's unlocked. There are many democracies among the warring states of Russia. <clears throat> Most are communist one-party states, fascist dictatorships, or military juntas, all of which are hostile to our continued existence. Dealing with these threats will require the finesse of diplomacy as well as the muscle of the military. Any nation on our borders could be potential, a possible enemy. It's up to our diplomats to find out who intends to be, and our military to make sure that they don't work, or they don't happen, or it doesn't happen. As we trend ever closer towards the inevitable reunification of Russia, our list of enemies will only grow larger. It's important we be prepared. We get manpower, war support, and unfortunately, I will be right back. My apologies about that, everyone. I wanted to go get some water to clear out my voice because it was getting a little scraggly. But we now have the Siberian National Republic led by uh, uh, Mikovsky still. Oh, the Vazd of the Heart. Mikhail Alexevich Matkovsky. Oh boy. Oh, well, this is honestly probably the next nation we gotta take out, so we gotta be prepared. Must be prepared. Let's see. Offensive lines, good. Oh, we gotta get all the way over there. That is not ideal. But that's okay. That is okay. Military austerity. No, 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 no. There you go. Cool. Reunification of Russia, I wish. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Political integration now. 59%. Very nice. And did the deck go up at all? Like, it's still 12%. You know what? Maybe 12% is the max we can do. You know what? Let's test it. So here, interest rates on our debt will increase. Well, we'll see what happens. 12%? Nope. Tom's house elections, lower house, nothing changed. Great, great. 
Decrease, hey, look at that, decrease of poverty, yes, yes, yes. Thanks to our greater poverty relief efforts, as well as the expansion of our civilian economy, the poverty rate has decreased significantly enough to be notable internationally. As our government congratulates itself for its efforts, the first official state projections on the impact of its improved popular prosperity are filed, stating that the people are able to access superior goods, economic opportunity shall be greatly increased, and our workforce shall be capable of greater and greater feats. A toast to our economists. Look at that. We get less monthly population, which is fine. We get more population factors, stability, war sport, construction speed, research speed, output, taxable population factor, yes, and income factor, yes, yes. If I close this out, what does it look like? And only 8.04 billion. Yay! So I guess maybe 12% might be the max. Hmm. Potential enemies, good. The Cathay. Central Asian Overtures. Let's try that one. Are there any lands or peoples more intertwined with the history and peoples of Russia than those of Central Asia? For centuries, we have traded with each other, fought each other, and in the past, decades, with each other. Or fought each with each other in the past. These lands now lay as divided as Russia, but this state of affairs likely won't hold. There are various warlords and nation-states who controlled or contended for dominance over the region, and who also might be acquiescent to an alliance of some sort or some sort of mutual defense pact. In any case, we must strive to appear strong and favorable potential allies should a Central Asian nation ever choose to support a contender for the Russian reunification. We shall see what happens. Cross all I'm thinking. There we go. So we can increase, we'll expand the university system. Decrease political outsiders. Screw it. We're going to do it. Uh, yeah, because doing this. Uh, we already got rid of that. Uh, we're doing 25%, which is looking a little better. That's a little bit better. Hey, we got it in Kamarovo. Kamarovo really likes us. The majority of it probably likes us. 55%, 29%. We just got another division or so out. That's nice. I want to make sure that these divisions are actually bigger and bigger and better. But we're doing okay. Uh, Siberia, how big is your army? 92,000, so that's not too bad. That's pretty good for them. They got plenty of fuel. Uh, yeah, I'm not too worried about that then. Yeah, we have 18 divisions, so... And we're trying to get these guys to become... Oh, we got more army XP. Look at that. Now, we're going to... I don't want to duplicate this yet. Just because... Well, I want to make these into tank divisions eventually. Because we are making a few main battle tanks, which is nice. Oh, look at that. 1,000 APCs. Let's go ahead and convert these guys over. APCs. APCs. All APCs. No, not motorized anti-air. Haha. <laughs> APCs, thank you. And then all APCs. Look at that armor. Not great. Not bad. A little more supply use, which is not ideal. We gotta get some logistic companies too, though. That'll be fine. And now we should have plenty, plenty, plenty of motorized. Which we're just gonna keep it on one. I might... Mm, I think some of the support equipment that we use does use motorized, so we gotta keep some motorized. So that's, that's okay to keep. Artillery-wise, we could improve that maybe a little bit more. 1970s down there. We will get 50s artillery armament upgrade. That'd be nice. Cool. Improved jet cast, very good. Hmm. So sad. Cool. Ah, Central Asian Overtures. Very good, my friends. Very, very good. And we shall do through Cathay. As we march onwards towards the re-establishment of Russian power on the world stage, we mustn't forget the nations with which we are to share borders. To our east lies one of the strongest nations in all the world at the moment, Japan. Over the course of several decades since the beginning of the century, Japan has slowly but surely conquered all of East Asia, most impressively pushing through most of or all of China, Indonesia, and Southeast Asia during the Second World War. However, despite Japan's impressive conquest, the grit's grip over Asia slackens. The Chinese are giant stirs, and Japan may not be prepared for what it will unleash. We should endeavor to endear ourselves towards China and the Chinese nation on the sphere's periphery in the hopes that we might one day secure an alliance. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea whatsoever. Bribe the opposition. Sure. Bribe them. It lowers this, but that's fine, because we can still get that increased. Look at that. Oh! 73%. Oh! Oh boy, new elections on the- oh crap, what is this? Oh no, 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 no. New elections on the horizon. It has already been four years since Pasternak ended the provisional government, and the first election of our new system could take place. Four years of great changes for the Republic of hopes and dreams of victories and defeats. For better or ill, the current Salon has to stand down for new elections, bringing with it unique its unique constitution. It's still a bit too early to tell the old government will be given a second mandate to continue its program, or if a new Salon will have to manage or a rival ideologies, projects, and legacies. Three of the candidates of the 63 elections again stand for the presidency. L like like a Chiyov of the December Salon, Sakharov of the Modernist Society, and the Kharms of the Basilar Group. Shostakovich himself being too poor, his friend and protege Weinberg is picking up the torch of the humanist law. No! Shostakovich! No! Whoa! Just because you have poor health, just like Pasternak? Come on, man. Come on. But keep comp composing. That'd be good for you, Shostakovich. It is too early to tell who has the advance, but going into the election, one party has been doing unusually well lately in the campaign. Which salon do you want to follow? 
No, Shostakovich, I wanted to do this campaign because of you. How did we decrease our popularity? I thought it was 25%. Ah. Um. Increases. I, oh, this is increases. I, oh, okay, cynicism, idealism. Uh, let's go to the humanists. Yes. Now, do we get anything, any new events here? I kind of doubt it. Still nice. Still not great. So we can increase voter turnout. Or decrease it if we really wanted to with election campaigns. 40% chance of increase in humanist popularity. 35% chance of increased popularity in a random district. Slight increase. Regular increase. Greatly increase. Oh, we're going to spend a lot of political power. Suppress voting? Is that... Why would... Is that not good? Why, why would we want to suppress voting? Slightly increase idealism? Hmm... So we probably would want to increase voting power in Tomsk. Because they, they like us quite a bit. For the most part. For the most part. So... Actually, where do we have the low support? Probably this one, Novosibirsk. Yeah, Novosibirsk is not good. Let's see. Maybe we can consolidate rule in Kemerovo and Tomsk first. Kemerovo and Tomsk. Let's do Kemerovo first. Let's try that one out. Voting campaign increases that one. Maybe not a bad idea. Political philosophy. We can wait on this because we're, we're doing really well. But this political integration stuff, 73% is great. So I'm not really too worried about that at all. So that would be good. We're going to stop doing regional development from now, which is fine. Just keep getting more political power, 1.64. Not bad. Only 18 billion in terms of uh, debt. Our deficit income ratio is only 108%. Not bad. Infantry anti tank. Awesome. Uh, it's 67. Happy 1967, my friends. It's going to be a new year. Hopefully, not too much of a new us because uh, we don't want to lose the elections. Uh, let's get some more armor maybe for our APCs. That might be very good to do. Look, look at that. Look at that. Let's increase voting turnout in Tomsk. It's 55% already. So. And we have to wait when we're moved. Increases turnout by 3%. 24.8. What the heck? It went down again. So here it's 46.5. Ooh, through Cathay. The Japanese fear is home to numerous nations, China, Thailand, and Vietnam, to name a few. Approaching these nations would do well to improve our international standing. While the reports have reached Tomsk about the conditions of enforced by Japan and their member states, beggars simply cannot be choosers. When the Great Green Light is given, diplomatic delegations to Burma, Vietnam, Thailand, China, and Indonesia will all be sent. From there, cultural exchanges and trade deals will be negotiated in order to prove relations already. Many in the Foreign Service have volunteered to be part of the missions. Curious to venture out of Russia and to the unknown exotic lands. Go east, young man. Towards our destiny, yes. Our Republic has surpassed any and all expectations others had of it. Time and time again, we have proven that it not only is our way of government practical, but also it is righteous. We have conquered all of Central Siberia, and in due time, we will move to conquer, whether diplomatically or militarily, the rest of Russia. Our march towards the reunification of all of Russia has now become, for all intents and purposes, unstoppable. Democracy will reign from Arkhangelsk to Petropavlovsk, and one day from Moscow to Vladivostok as well. Long live the Republic. Yes, we're support, political power, all that good stuff. Yes, please. Ah, military construction three. Great. So that's done. It's 67. I want to continue improving maybe some of uh, this stuff too. Get some better armor maybe. Uh, let's let's get focus a little bit more on APCs for now. Just because we're actually, we have them in the field. That might be better to do. Focus on what you have already in the field. Since we don't have that many tanks. But with this one. Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to reset. Just reset that. Duplicate it. And then we'll call this one tanks. Because we'll get there eventually. Not yet, but eventually. As we're slowly trying to make more infantry. Oh, you need recon. Oh my goodness. 20 combat width. We need to make 40 combat width. 40 combat width is very nice. 8%. Cool. Not really much has changed there, which is fine. Towards our destiny. Alright, so how did the campaign go in Tomsk? Hey, we're up by, I got back up by point 0.1. Better turn out 46.5. Anything change here? 25.5? Oh my goodness. Oh wait, no, that's not Tomsk. Oh, that is Tomsk, yeah. For some reason I thought it was Kemerovo. Wait, do we do... Wait, do we do... We, hmm. I can't even remember what I did now. My bad. If that's the case, do it in Tomsk, maybe? Voting camp... Oh, we're doing voting campaign in Tomsk. Uh, do it in Tomsk, why not? Let's see what happens. Consolidate humanist rule. Now nah, we good. I've learned my lesson now. Okay, 24.8%. It keeps going down and up. Maybe other parties are doing the same thing. Maybe. 
Ah, uh, I just hope we can win. We gotta get rid of December's popularity, though. Hmm. 45%. 58, look at that. 58%. That's not bad. 58%. It was 55. So we'll see what happens. Hmm. I guess technically, if you really wanted to, I should decrease... Oh, end of the South African War. Decrease voting turnout in Tom's, as well as Camarovo, and increase it in Novo Sofirsk, maybe? Hmm. Cool. Next one. Improved organization. Uniting a region of Central Siberia was no simple task. It required the collective efforts of thousands of soldiers and officers working in tandem to order to subdue the smaller warlords on our borders. The experience these soldiers and officers have gained thus far will prove vital as we attempt to improve our military in the future. We should tap on this experience through the promotion of our most experienced and successful officers and soldiers. Additionally, we should begin interviewing our soldiers to see what they believe needs improvement in our armed forces. Yes, we get a little more debt, but it is what it is. Cool. Suppress voting. Slightly increase this stuff over here. Uh, idealism. Hmm. Oh wow, we got 55 political power. That's quite a bit. That's not too bad. Expand the university system. Uh, we could do that. Recruit the best outsiders. Well, hmm. Research facilities is always good to help develop too. Encourage political thought. Yeah, we get more. Plus, that that just that's really good. I got to do that one. Even though it costs quite a bit, you get. Plus 0.35 every day. That's so nice. Campaigning. Voting campaign in Tomsk. Uh, let's see. What happened? So now we're at 24.8. Not really much happened here. Uh, where do we do it? I forget exactly where we did it. Wow. They have a lot of support over there. We have not a lot of support there. Not a lot of support there. Not a lot of support in some of these places. Holy cow. How about Krasnoyarsk next, maybe? Oh, there's Broke. Oh, we can do that one. Ooh, you know what? We're going to do one of these first. Let's try Krasnoyarsk, maybe? Kamarovo. We're not even close to getting any support there. Oh, my goodness. Well, Krasnoyarsk to a degree. Tomsk is really close. <sighs> hmm. How about over here? Yeah, that's not at all. Holy cow. <clears throat> I'll do Noble Sabirs. Uh, I'll try, why not? And I'll save it for more pro humanist campaign. That'd be good. Cool, let's grab some more artillery. Base bleed. I love base bleed. Can only get 2.2. .2. God dang, 2.2 .2 a day. That's so much. So good. I could get more if we raised uh, civilian spending, but let's not do that. Cool. Wait, oh, do, victory for the human society. Today, the citizens have entrusted Weinberg with the role of president. With this victory and strong results for the human salon, the Republic is set to operate under the un unicameral Violet Duma for four years. Four years of direct democracy, referendum, and the pursuit of humanist ideals. President Weinberg has campaigned on the importance of converting the Central Siberian plant to one of the world's largest worker-run economy. Equally important to him is the development of the National Army, building on Marshal Shapshnikov's basic reforms to build a citizen's army capable of outnumbering any threat to the Republic. The new president looks to the east to open up the Republic to the world by reaching the sea to bring the world the good news of a Russia freed from tyrants and extremism, a Russia kind to its workers and ruthless against the nation's enemies. Increases cynicism, which is fine. Increases humanist popularity in a random district. Did we actually win? Did we actually win already? Did we? What? Really? Did we? What? Passing the torch. Heir the humanist uh, Michelslaw Weinberg sat beside his good friend Dmitry Shostakovich on the ailing former leader's tiny front porch, staring at the newly paved road in front of the modest house. No words needed to be shared between the two men, who have seen the closest of partners for more than 20 years by this point. Weinberg rarely, rarely felt vulnerable and nervous, usually too busy focusing on whatever work there was to be done to improve the Republic, but he even he felt the pressure of being the newly elected president. <clears throat> Good luck, Zen, said the now-retired Shasta with a wide smile. I know you'll make me, and more importantly, the workers of the Republic, proud. I'm too old and sick for this, but I'm currently composing a hell of a symphony in honor of the great work you've already done and have yet to do. If it's good enough, maybe it'll even become a piece of all Central Siberians can be proud of. <clears throat> Thank you, Dimitri. It means a lot. I wouldn't be where I am without you, of course. It's time for me to get to work, but first, how about one more cup of tea? Did we actually... I, I can't... What? No, we didn't win. There's no way we could have won that, that fast. There's no way. No, that's fake news. That's gotta be fake news. The elections last for like three months? Maybe I'm just too used to having long elections or something. I don't know. Get some more armor on breakthrough. Yeah, oh, plus 15%. Sign me up. I mean, I'm still going to increase popularity of the humanists, but... 
Yeah, we're, I'm still going to do this because we still need it for the future anyways. But still, improve organization, steel caravans, less division attrition, and minus 20% supply consumption. God dang. Every army marches on its stomach, and if you can't supply an army's ravenous appetite, it will die, living in the rough and varied lands of Russia. Logistics can be a major challenge. Supply lines often run long and snake-like, leaving them vulnerable to attack. The terrain weather can also make transportation of materials and goods a slow and arduous task, with snowstorms and mud a very real and present threat. Mitigating these threats to our supply lines through the use of new technology is vital in this regard. Improved trucks with all-terrain capability along trains, which can pull ever larger loads, will surely increase our logistical capacity. Oh, military capacity. Oh, the English transitional government declared war on the state of Wales. As they should. Alright, cool. I'm still going to do this before we do anything else. Campaign. Um, that's nice. I, I still don't believe it, so... Nope. Still don't believe it. Uh, and I, I will do this. Just get rid of this eventually, so... Okay, there goes the state of Wales. Looks like maybe kind of anarchistic, maybe. Anglo-Welsh war is over. Well, that's cool. I still want to do more of this. More of this. More of this stuff. Oh, only 19 billion in terms of debt. That's all. And pro humanist campaign. 25%. Well, it could be worse, I suppose. Tomsk average popularity is 38%. Yeah, we don't have a lot of support in Novo Sibirsk at all. 13%. Kevin Robo kind of likes us, though. And Krasnoyarsk, we're kind of like, eh. So. Definitely. I don't, I don't believe. I don't believe that we won. I just. I, I just. I, I can't. I don't know. It just it went by so fast. It went by so fast. Ex light exterior development. Nice. Uh, get some more. more, Even more breakthrough in armor. Alright, so tw another 25 for 27. We're going to expand the university system because apparently our debt rate just does not improve. But let's, re let's help out our research facilities, which should be doing extremely well. 8.25 a month. God dang, that's a lot. Outdated research to become modern research facilities. We'll lose a little, bit, a little bit of political power, but we can research faster. Republican Eagles. For decades, the Luftwaffe has unleashed hellfire upon our Russian brethren in the West. There isn't a single Russian in those lands without a story to tell about the bombings. Men and women swept up in firestorms in cities. Villagers seeing the village entirely destroyed in single carpet bombings. Oil fields alight for days after strategic bombing. All stories that support the common logic. That if we lose a war in the air, we lose a war and we lose it quickly. Aerial supremacy is of the utmost importance if we are to reunite Russia and one day combat Germany. Currently, our Air Force is a joke. We need to produce more planes and better quality planes if we were to catch up, and we need to do so rapidly. Yeah, I would agree. That's probably a good idea. Uh, how much support equipment do we have? Oh, we got plenty. Nice. Go ahead and make these guys. Give them... I really want to give them this, because it gives them so much armor. But I'm going to do this for these guys first. You guys switch up to here. We lose a little bit of... Actually, we don't lose recon, but it does give you even more armor, which is nice. That'd be good. Is it her main battle tanks at all? A little bit, but not too much. Cool. Let's come over here. And, ooh, do we have anything down here at all? No. Poverty rate, oh yes, I want to improve poverty rate. That's the next, that's definitely next. Developmental subsidies, construction speed. Yeah, nothing here that just increases the growth. Oh, never mind. I found the poverty rate again. We gotta do that one immediately. We'll do that one and then expand the state welfare programs because I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I can't get over how fast that election season was. Holy cow. We currently get 1.92, almost to a day. That's not bad. <clears throat> good, 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 good. Humanists aligned. Of course, political crisis is done. We just have a basic army, which is fine. Cynicism looking great. Political integration is looking even better. 86 point, 86% of the way there. Nice. Hey, we actually got up to 25.3%. Not bad, not bad. Republican Eagles, very cool, very cool. Duty to the Republic. Our army is an army of citizen soldiers. Our ranks are filled with men of the common folk, not elites from fancy school with special training. These are men who are doing their duty for the Republic. Many of them volunteers. However, with each war, our ranks do no further. Even as our armies, enemies' armies swell to ever larger sizes, we must go to the cities, the towns, the villages of the Republic and ask them to help us defend our democracy. Those we help must help us defend our country if we are to survive. Organization, recovery rate, war support, a division, attack, and defense. Yes, please. Now that's 58%, 29%, 45, 38, not too much change, which is fine, but always keep an eye on this stuff. Consolidate humanist rule. I mean, we could. It doesn't really help us that much, though. All right, so, and I'm going to just go ahead and just go for the next uh, poverty rate, because getting better, getting more people out of poverty, obviously, is always a good thing. <laughs> Rocket-assisted projected stuff, thingamabobs? Yes. Yes, please. Actually, how is a poverty rate looking right now? So for poverty, we have 25 to 50%. So we're here. If we go down here, we get even more people we can tax. We just get so many more benefits, except for monthly population. Oh, that looks so much better. 
or not so much better, but it's quite a bit better. And currently, we can only increase it by 4.5 a month, which is still pretty early on, but that's okay. That's going to get some more uh, armor. That'd be great. Another more divisions. Invest in construction. We could, but now we're good. Come over here and keep training if you need to. That'd be great. Yeah, oh, what that, that was? Was that an APC? We have an APC there. Let's see. Expand the welfare state. That'd be fine. We use the three civilian factories. Doesn't matter. We get more stability too, so that's pretty good. Uh, nope. That's okay. Good. 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 I would maybe we need mil military police as well for when we go to war and stuff. I really want to put main battle tanks on these guys. I think that'd be fun. Cool. A nation of Yeomen. National debt will increase a little bit. Uh, it's not bad. Military education. Let's do that one first. Officers are one of the vital pieces of the modern military unit. His responsibilities include organizing his men, coordinating with the other officers, and leading his men into battle. The qualities we believe to be of the greatest importance in executing those three tasks are initiative and creativity. Officers trained in our military academies have this idea of initiative and ingen ingenuity drilled into them. For example, officers must be able to generate at least three solutions to any one test we present them, and execute it in a reasonable amount of time. There are hundreds of young, creative, and motivated soldiers in our armed forces who have the potential to be officers, but cannot afford the cost of schooling. We must make officer training and schooling available to these men so that we might capitalize on their skills and ambitions. In a new Republican army. <clears throat> Some say that applying political ideology to military doctrine is a recipe for failure, but our humanist doctrine might yet generate substantial improvements in our army's performance as well as political and cultural benefits. <clears throat> there are many foreign threats. We like to see our workers' republic wiped off the map, and we do not have the luxury of allowing only volunteers into the army or neglecting the said army's development and training. Our plans take inspiration from revolutionary France's Levy and Mass, and our humanist principles of equality of all citizens, military duty to the state, and fighting to defend the workers' freedom. There shall be a mandatory militia training every week, conscription will be added to the humanist constitution, and in addition, we will encourage the use of mission-style tactics, which will allow flexibility for soldiers and officers to adapt to their circumstances and surroundings. These reforms will transform our armed forces into a true Republican army of and for the people, and one of which will be able to protect our state from any and all invaders, the hallmark of the people's state. Very, very good. <clears throat> ah, very nice, very nice. It is only July 10th, 67. And we're still building ourselves up even more, 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 more. Uh, 80%. There you go. Keep building up civilian factories would be nice. Only 8.5 billion in terms of de deficits. Or, yeah. That's not bad, right? That's not bad. I'm tired of seeing this, so let's just go and get rid of this. Whatever. It's not really worth it, but I don't want to see it anymore. I wonder what happens if we get max out political integration. Does something good happen? Hopefully. Hopefully. And we can do more tank stuff. Let's grab some better soft attack. And piercing. <clears throat> that would be very, very good. Military education. Army professionalism. At least everything, everything is improving. Except for our nuclear stockpile, which is fine. Makes sense. We can't really afford that. So, probably opposition. Um, expand university system. We might as well do that. There you go. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. And we still get how much political power? 1.92 still. Same amount. That's not bad. Cool. Military education. And we should do a nation of yeomen. We are a nation of peasants and yeomen. The vast majority of our people live on farms or in isolated villages. This can make it quite difficult to call upon them for the military, for when the peasant, with little knowledge of rifles or riflery, is suddenly given a Kalashnikov and sent into battle, he has just as much of a chance of killing his own comrades as he does the enemy. In order to rectify this situation or issue, we will begin mandating a few hour rifle training every week for men and women over 16. They will be given rifles and taught how to shoot at targets in local shootings and fields. Thus, when the time comes for them to fight, they will be able to slip into the soldier's role with ease. <clears throat> Ah, humanist conscription. I love it. 95% of the way there. Getting so close to 100%. Outsiders Act is almost done. So we lose some research speed, but that's okay. And once this is gone, we're going to remove decrease political outsiders, which is good. Gibraltar Dam finally finished. Hey, congratulations. <clears throat> I don't know if I've ever seen <clears throat> uh, Iberia. I'll be right back again. My apologies once again, I had to go clear my voice out just to make sure that I don't sound too scraggly again. I'm not sure what's wrong with me right now, but apparently France sides with Germany. Very surprising, but regardless, uh, let's see, we're almost done here. I'm going to wait till this is done, because we're already at like, what, 95%, 95%. Once we get this done, we might do one more, and then we'll be done with integration, which would be great. 46% down here. Uh, we did as much as we possibly could for poverty, military, no, 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 no. Uh, 50, 50 political powers is not bad. Developmental subsidies. Yeah, not bad, not bad. And once it's done, 
Anything else? Lower support, consolidate humus rule, whatever. And hey, there we go. We don't need to spend any more. We had 100% for no political outsiders. We have integrated all politicians and people, and we've got 100% idealism. We are done here. Unless we really want to get maybe some more research speed when that thing pops up. Cool. And principle of the directive management. The worst possible thing a military can do to itself is implement a rigid chain of command with strict oversight, where every action must be pre-approved by the man above them. It can allow one to exercise great control over the military, but it also ensures that your lower ranks will be essentially brain dead and eliminate your army's effectiveness. Instead, one should encourage the lower ranks to think for themselves as to how to interpret or apply strategic directives from above. The officers and troops on the ground often understand the immediate military situation a lot better than the generals miles away from the front lines do. If your men can't function autonomously from high command, then the second your men are encircled or communications are cut off, they are as good as dead. Medium spending goes with large spending. Uh, ooh. Ar ooh, look at that. Army professional... Army professionals a monthly change goes up by 1%. Not bad. So we're done here for now. Techno music. Ooh. It fills the radio waves and shocks the ears of all those who are tuning in. Engineering students at Tomsk Republican University associated with their modernist club in partnership with the composer Eduard Artemyev have invented a whole new way to make music. Using an electronic instrument called a synthesizer, Artemyev and the university students have effectively created a whole new genre and sound to be played on the radio and at lively nighttime concerts that can only be described as something frightening, sometimes exhilarating, and always a party and exciting journey for the ears. The avant-garde musical pioneers have already released their first album of techno music, and is widely popular with the youth. The humanists and December's old-timers and older generations as a whole have slandered the genre as nothing but bleeps and blorps, and hardly music at all. Try as they might, though, they can't stop our culture from evolving. Why do old people have to ruin everything? Well, I don't know. Is it because they're old? I don't know. Don't ask me. I know nothing. Let's see. Let's get some uh, armament upgrades. Cool. Consolidate humans roll. No, we're good. So, let's come down here. Actually, do we have anything else up top here first? Yeah. Just, I always gotta keep an eye on this. Ugh, we have to live in a democracy. We have to keep an eye on our uh, popularity. Alright, so we can spend some time down here. Uh, worker training. It really doesn't matter. Bonus to industry is always nice. Societal development for research facilities. Academic base. Agriculture. I like the agriculture one. Let's do that one. It only adds money or money to the debt, but you know what? Hey, look at 7.4%. It's better than 6.7. Nice. Better research facilities. The money kept, keeps on rolling in, and our scientists are loving it. With the budget of our research and development pr programs skyrocketing, we built new research facilities and upgraded our old laboratories. This won't just allow us to be safer when working, but handle more dangerous materials and ensure greater amounts of research to be done. Across the private and public sector, new technologies for military to civilian uses are being developed. Now, of course, this is a good for more than just scientists. Now, citizens will be able to enjoy the boon of research and economic bonuses like new industrial technology that keeps the economy moving. We'll get back to the schools eventually. Lose political power will get more research speed? Not a bad thing. Cool. And our debt isn't increasing by an extreme amount, which is nice. Effective armament calibration? Yeah, totally. Cool. And actually, was it the elite one? Was it the elite one? No. I, uh, no. I forget which one gives us more research speed, but that's fine. Uh, investment construction, worker training. I, I'm just gonna do whatever we can do here. Encourage expatriates. Get more stability, which is not bad. Oh, more, wait, more weekly stability, you know, and more war support. Let's do that one. We don't get too much from this, but getting 100% stability and even more war support will definitely benefit us in the future. So, nice, nice, nice. How is this looking over here? APCs looking tremendous. Maybe a little bit too tremendous. We want more fighters. We need more main battle tanks as well. So, let's lower you down to four. Get a few more fighters out. We got enough cast too. Principal directive management. Let's do support weapon core. Let's do for you draft with service bar requirement. Ooh, that hurts us a little bit. Let's save that one for later. Support weapons core. The two single greatest military innovations to come out of the 19th century was an artillery and machine gun. These two weapons together would prove to be some of the most deadly and destructive in human history with a death toll in the tens of millions of climbing. The ability to bombard an enemy position from miles away or to saturate an enemy position with hundreds of bolts in a matter of seconds is an incredible advantage. We must train our men on the use and maintenance of these weapons, including them as part of our mandatory military training program. A good idea. Very, very good idea. Anything else here? Not really. Cool. I mean, bribe the opposition, no. Uh, let's see. We could build things faster. What are we building? What was it with that too? Good, 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 good. <clears throat> we have the best APCs in all of Russia. Worker training, expertise. I like the bonus for industry. We could probably really, really use that. Scientific research, education stuff. Uh, we're doing agriculture. Let's do this one. Just because we can. We want to do all. We want to do them all, so. How, how is the National Republic looking? Stock the armories. They have a few more divisions now, which is not good. We do have 19. They are catching up, though. 
But they don't have any APCs, and that's what we're really focusing on right now. Tanks, IFVs, I don't even want to see that. Let's see. Anti-tank is looking great. How it's, oh my goodness, this looks so good. Infantry equipment is looking awesome. Motorized looking awesome. We're doing really, really well. I'm even though I like we were struggling a little bit, at least I was struggling a little bit, especially at the beginning of the last episode. We're doing pretty darn well. I mean, yeah, the dead is not great, but at this point, I don't care. Modern Amalgame. Amalgame. During the French Revolution and subsequent Napoleonic Wars, the French military would often mix conscripts with the Corps Army. In doing so, they ensured their conscripts would be brought up quickly to speed, with the rest of the army developing their skills through close proximity with experienced soldiers. We should endeavor to do the same, taking our conscripts and mixing them in with our professional army, bringing everyone up to speed on the front lines, and saving the army plenty of time and training. Good idea. Very, very good idea. We have a standardized army now. Good. Good. Okay, expand the university system, huh? That's what I was waiting for. Lose, lose a little bit of stability, that's fine. And it, we can't go above 12%, which is awesome. 9.2? A little higher. It is what it is. Probably from other expenditures. Ooh, civilian construction is costing us quite a bit, actually. But that's okay. That's okay. Actually, do we have another one up here? I forget. No, 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 no. Yeah, whatever. 44 billion GDP, not bad. 1. 116.5%, whatever. Mm, worker training, yeah, worker training would be nice. Which one do we have next? Ooh, look at that, 5.25 every month. Oh, academic base is probably gonna be the next one that we improve. All right, let's go ahead and do even more artillery stuff. Yes, 1960s base bleed. Oh, we're gonna be shelling the hell out of our enemies, which I love, 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 love. Oh, let's get this one. Moderately increases GDP, 44.6, not bad. And we have that one, and military health care. Ooh. So the men we have on the front line deserve the best medical care we have to offer. They risk their lives every day protecting us at home. The least we can do is protect them to provide decent health care. Additionally, in providing them better medical care, we minimize our losses and preserve valuable military experience that even these soldiers accumulate on the battlefield. Even more importantly, providing them free military health care will boost morale in the armed forces, encouraging our men to fight harder and take bigger risks, knowing that they will be covered in the event of a medical emergency. And actually, we get triple, only 20% bonus to researching stuff, which is not bad. All right, let's keep doing this. Good. To sustain fire improvements. Awesome. Standardized army. We're, we're working better on that. Anything else on your political interference for army professionalism goes up at six a month. It's going to take some time, though, to get that better. Five a month, 122 out of 240. 77 out of 240. Uh, 55 out of 240. 29 out of 240. So, we're not going to get too much more improvement after academic base for a little while, but that's okay. Basic, let's see. We will get more research speed, a little bit more output, and a little bit more efficiency cap, which is, you know, okay. So we already did, the, we can't do reunification of Russia, but we did do the Novosibirsk Air Base building, so which is okay with me. Yeah. Uh, when can we get a war? Is it 69? It is 69, so we still got an, an entire another year we've got to get through first. Wow. Uh, maybe we'll do industrialized equipment next. Maybe it does increase our GDP. We're 44.9, which does help offset the the debt that is increasing here. Congress, uh, what the Great Caucus Revolt, Caucasian. Oh my goodness! Uh, I do heavy machinery because we can. Military, uh, healthcare good and a strong, undaunted, defiant. The citizen army stands strong. Following numerous reforms and expansions, we can now proudly say that our army is one of the greatest in all of Russia. Should any nation be so foolish as to attack us, we will have thousands of men, citizens of this great republic, ready to crash upon the enemy like a tidal wave, sweeping through their lines and pass them towards the capital. Should they survive that, our tanks and divisions will pincer them from the sides as artillery rains down upon them like hell, like hail. Let it not be said, Tom's could not fight. Get more daily army speaking. Yes, organization recovery rate, war support attack, and less training time. Nice. Beautiful things. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, we have only 99%. Only 99% political integration. So it's like one dude who doesn't want to be integrated yet. Sustained fire capabilities. Nice. Oh. Oh, they revolted. Uh, oh, there we go. We can do pro humanist campaign again, which we'll do. We're currently at what? 25.3 still? Not bad. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, United England for now, for the most part. Uh, the kingdom here still exists. I'm surprised Bormann hasn't done anything. Wow. Vete kind of eins? Vete kind Adolf Reich's Goring. Oh, no, not Goring. Gorg. Georg Wilhelm zu Waldeck and Piermont. Wow. That is interesting to say the least. That is an interesting fellow to say. <laughs> Africa Shield. Oh. 
Oh, the elephant Africa shield is right there. That is very long Southwest Africa. Yeah, that looks... Honestly, this looks really sad, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, it looks really sad for South Africa. I wish I had more of, like, Gaza. Gaza? Or Maputo? That'd be kind of cool. Hey, look, another division. Good. Very nice. We might, ha might not have the biggest army, but we have a very strong army. Happy 1968, my friends. The Grand Russian Army. The Red Twilight. Awesome. How many divisions? They have? Oh my gosh, 41. Holy cow. Yeah, we gotta make sure we get a bigger army now. Uh, actually, I wanna make a better army. Not a bigger army, but a better one. The Red Twilight. Since the fall of London, novelist Eric Blair, better known by his pen name George or Orwell, has gained prominence fr from his political writings done in exile in Canada. Today, he has released his most lengthy opus, the last chapter in his legacy of the Valkyrie alternative history series of Red Twilight. The series takes place in a timeline that diverges from ours with a central power's victory in the First World War and received critical attention for its allegorical de deconstruction of the world. After the defeat of the Entente, the governments of the British Empire and France quickly collapse and are replaced by socialist republics while Russia eventually becomes a fascistic dictatorship led by right revolutionary Boris Savinkov. After unifying to destroy the German Empire, her allies, and the remnants of the Entente, the Alliance quickly shatters with the libertarian syndicalist commune of France and Oswald Mosley's Union of Britain forging their own internationals and engaging in an apocalyptic nuclear war that leaves Europe and North America in ruins, while Russia and Japan engage in a similarly destructive schism. The world by 62 is devastated by nuclear fallout and divided by a four-sided armistice threatening to end either civilization or enslave it under various flavors of totalitarianism. Ending with the English Socialist American Commonwealth tearing its part itself into a third American Civil War, as West supremacists a revolt in the South, the novel has received analysis for its complex parallels with a violent conflict occurring all around the world, though some dismiss it as no different than the rest of the glut of all history novels that have been filling bookshelves in recent years. Responding to critics, Orwell has addressed the implausibility of this universe by writing, This universe is no less stranger than anything that has happened in ours for the last half century. We live in a childish fantasy, don't we? Woo! Interesting times. Interesting, interesting, interesting times that we live in. Still not purple enough, but I can't really do much about it, so. Uh, hey, House Elections? Yeah, okay, cool. Undefined? Great! So, now we'd have no unique focus tree unless something else pops up, but we do get 2.58 political power date, which is okay with me, just because this means that we can get this done faster and do a whole bunch more of development and good stuff for everyone here. Base bleed, very nice, very nice. Um, if that's the case... Oh, that's a little bit ahead of time. Let's not do that one just yet. Maybe some more support companies. Let's get some military police, finally. Finally getting more military police for our soldiers to put down enemies when needed. But if we have no event, I guess we'll end the episode here. Oh, well, we've done really well, guys. I would say we've done very, very well. We're led by, oh, Weinberg, which is a little saddening. But it is what it is. Regardless, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will probably reunify... All of the rest of this part of Siberia and have a good time trying to control our debt, even though the National Protection Army is walloping the Republic of China. Regardless, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hope you did. Regardless, I will see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.